Hi everybody, welcome back to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. You've made it to part two of the deep dive tutorial series on the all new 2023 Lexus RX. If you've missed part one, make sure to locate the link for that video in the description below. You'll also see a time stamped index that will allow you to jump through to different topics in this video series. And if you're watching on mobile, look for the word more somewhere below the video title. That will open the video description and you can scroll through the images of the chapters. Click view all if you'd like to see the chapters in list view. You can also see the full timestamped index in the mobile format by clicking on more from above. Hopefully that'll help you explore the material at your own pace. But let's dive right in. To get the most out of this tutorial, make sure you have your Lexus driver profile already added to the vehicle. I've linked that section of the video for you. There should be a link above and also in the description below this video. Just in case you need to go back to that step before moving on with part two of the deep dive tutorial series all about the RX. And coming down to our main screen. Let's talk about some system basics. There are multiple systems operating off of the main screen. Your phone's system, Apple CarPlay for an iPhone, and Android Auto for an Android phone. And if you click on Lexus, then you'll be in the Lexus interface system. You'll know you're in Lexus interface if you see the Lexus menu bar on the left-hand side. Everything is touchscreen operated and you have a tremendous amount of voice command capabilities more than ever before. We are going to go through each of the items in the Lexus interface system and then we'll move on to climate control and the other buttons and controls on the lower center console. Taking a look at some basic information, looking at the menu bar on the left-hand side, your top icon will be a shortcut to your phone's operating system, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Clicking Lexus to come back. So if you don't see that, it means that your profile is not connected or your permissions have not been turned on for that connection. If you don't see those icons, the top icon on the display will be the arrow for the Lexus Drive Connect navigation system. Your Lexus audio system. There are two phone views for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. When you select the phone icon, it might take you to a large, mostly blank screen. There is a shortcut back to your Apple CarPlay phone feature right in the middle. Just click to open. If you're connected for Bluetooth only, this phone screen will appear a little bit different. The vehicle feature screen and the settings menu. We'll go through all of these items in detail. At the top right hand corner of your display, you'll see the icon for the optional wireless charger. When it's not charging, it's gray. When it's charging, it lights up in blue and you'll have a drop down message letting you know the charging status. To the right, you have an icon that looks like a satellite. That's actually indicating the DCM connection, so the connection for your vehicle to the cloud and the system that pulls in all of the details for Lexus interface, especially your connected services like Drive Connect. Your Bluetooth symbol will be highlighted in blue if you're connecting your phone for Bluetooth only. Otherwise, even though your phone may be paired to the system, if you're actively using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that requires Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to be turned on on your phone, it's going to show that Bluetooth icon gray. You'll also see the digital clock in the top right-hand corner. If you click the clock, it will shortcut you to the clock settings menu. There are three ways to access voice commands. Since Lexus interface is a voice first system, all you have to do is say, hey Lexus. You can even say, hi Lexus, hello Lexus, or okay Lexus. You can also use the talk button on the steering wheel and even a soft button right on screen. Let's take a quick look at each different way of accessing the voice command system. 
To use the talk button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel for Lexus interface, you'll push and release the talk button. When you push and release the talk button, it's the same as saying, hey Lexus. Push and hold to cancel. Get directions to Starbucks. I found 15 results. Tune to 97.5 FM. Tuning to 97.5 FM. I want to listen to First Wave on satellite radio. Tuning to First Wave on XM. To interact by voice with your telephone's assistant, either use your phone's wake word like Hey Siri or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel. There are also soft buttons on screen that operate voice commands. The Lexus system uses the search icon to activate your Lexus assistant. Just touch the magnifying glass icon. When you're driving, the magnifying glass will change to an image of a microphone. With your phone's assistant, push and hold the menu icon on the bottom left-hand corner to activate Siri for Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto uses the microphone icon on the lower left-hand side in the Android Auto menu. To cancel, either say cancel by voice, click the X on the top left corner or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel. We're going to move down our Lexus interface menu from top to bottom. If your phone is connected for Apple CarPlay, you're going to see that icon at the very top. All right, let's talk about some of the most important things that you need to know to use Apple CarPlay in your Lexus. We won't go over all of the apps because the apps will vary depending on the apps that you have on your iPhone that are compatible for Apple CarPlay. But I do wanna give you some important tips so that you can use the system really easily right off the bat. It's going to be a brighter, very colorful system. It's going to mirror what your phone's operating system looks like. We do have a left side menu, the digital clock from your phone, bars of service, and our network connection. So right now I have two bars of service and I'm on a 5G network. The battery level for the phone, and then there are three different categories of recently used apps. Navigation apps, entertainment-based apps, so things like music or podcasts, and then communication-based apps. You might see phone, messages, WhatsApp, and even your calendar. It just depends on what was recently used in that particular category. At the very bottom of the menu bar, you'll see a different type of menu shortcut. There are two different versions. When you see this image, you're shortcutting to the Apple CarPlay home screen. This tile layout is not customizable. Information is automatically populated here. And if you have an upcoming appointment on your calendar, you'll even see a calendar notification here. When you're on this home screen, you'll see the apps menu shortcut. You can either click to open or swipe. Notice that we have three dots on the screen. The first dot represents that home screen with the multi-tile layout. And then we have multiple pages of compatible apps. It just depends on the compatible apps that are on your phone. You can customize how they appear on your vehicle screen, and you can even delete apps so that they don't show up on the car if you prefer. For more information about how Apple CarPlay operates in your Lexus, make sure to check out our Apple CarPlay Tech Tip Tutorials. There are three ways to wake up Siri. You can use your phone's wake words to activate Siri, or you can use the button on the steering wheel, or use the menu button on screen. Just touch and hold, and you'll activate your phone's assistant. Click to cancel. You can do this from the multi-tile home screen as well. Whichever menu shortcut button you see at the bottom can be used to wake up your phone's assistant just by touching and holding. 
you'll have your phone's assistant icon active on screen, indicating that it's listening and ready for you to give a command. Or just use the wake words for your phone's assistant. One of the things you may notice on the RX is that there is no longer a radio button shortcut. I sure wish there was, but there's not. So the fastest way to get to your radio screen, which is a Lexus interface feature, is by voice command. Hey Lexus, show my radio favorites screen. Showing radio favorites. Super easy. So that is the quickest way that I've discovered to be able to go from Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to your radio favorite screen, really for any other operation. And if you'd like to go back to Apple CarPlay and you don't feel like clicking on anything, just launch Siri. Hey Siri, mm -hmm. open Apple Maps. And now we're back in Apple CarPlay. When you receive a text message notification, you can either Click on the message notification or ask Siri to read it for you. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Read my last text from Ava. You have recent messages from Ava. Ava said, hi Melissa. Thank you. I hope you have a great weekend. Would you like to reply? Yes. Reply, thanks so much. Your reply to Ava says, thanks so much. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. Just remember that if Siri reads a message back to you and asks if you're ready to send, you can say change it, you can say add to it, or you can send or cancel. So you can use the touch screen to interact with your message function. You could read, review, change it, or just send right away if you don't want to hear the whole replay of your message. You can make a phone call in the exact same way. Hey Siri, call Sarah. Did you mean Sarah? Mobile? Yes. Calling Sarah. Mobile. If a contact has multiple types of phone numbers, you can even be more specific. You can ask for them to call that person cell, work, home. The more specific you are, the more efficient it is to place your call or send a message. Hey Siri, get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas using Google Maps. Here's what I found. Getting directions to target using Google Maps. Just touch the item on the screen to open. If you don't designate a navigation app, Apple CarPlay will default to Apple Maps. Here's how that works. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Get directions to target in the Woodlands, Texas. Okay, here's what I found. Starting route to target. Proceed to the route. Hmm? Cancel navigation. Okay, I've stopped navigating. One moment, still working. Please try again. If you have an app that's not operating correctly, maybe it gives you a failure message or it's a map that doesn't show correctly, it means that you need to either do an update or download and reinstall, or sometimes you just need to open the app on your phone and log back in if it has an account. There may be some permissions that need to be granted after an update, but typically any kind of app functionality problem that you may be having in Apple CarPlay is resolved by going to the app on your phone. Make sure to take care of that when you're not driving. And to come back to your Lexus base system, just click the apps icon and touch Lexus. Now let's take a look at Android Auto. And for an Android phone, you might need to select the additional connect using wireless Android Auto, and then follow additional prompts for Android Auto setup. When you're looking at the Lexus interface system and you see your Lexus menu bar on the left-hand side, you'll know you have Android Auto active and connected because you'll see the Android Auto logo at the top of the menu bar. Just click to open. And of course, it's very important to know how to get back to the Lexus menu. Open the apps menu screen and click Lexus. And now you'll be back in Lexus interface. Just click on the Android Auto icon to launch the system 
on screen, you'll have your network connection, phone battery level charge, the digital clock from your phone, and your three frequently used app categories, navigation, entertainment and information like news or music, and communication. Just below, you'll have a microphone icon because you can use the wake words for your phone's assistant, the talk button from the steering wheel, or the microphone icon right on screen. How's the weather today? Today in spring, there will be scattered... After the most recent Android Auto update, you might notice that there's been a great improvement to the response and the interrupt capability for the Google Voice Assistant. Depending on which version of Android Auto you have, you might be able to give your prompt and go straight into your command, just like you can with the Lexus Assistant or Siri for Apple phones. If you're having trouble with the Google Assistant understanding your command, make sure to wait for the listening tones and then that should clear that up for you. Okay, Google. Give directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Target is eight minutes from your location by car in light traffic. Coming below the microphone, you have a shortcut to the new home screen for Android Auto. This will give you two tiles and you can scroll through to suggestions on the right side screen. Only certain apps are compatible with the right side tile. A more recent capability for Android Auto is to take the Google Map full screen. Just select the Apps menu and then click on Maps to open Google Maps to the full screen view. You can click on an app or feature to operate it or just use voice commands. OK, Google, call Sarah. Calling Sarah. You can also operate these things by voice command, even when you're in the Lexus interface screens. If I want to keep my hands on the wheel and I don't want to click anything to launch, I could launch a specific app with my Google Assistant. Okay, Google. Get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Target is eight minutes from your location. I could do the same thing with our Lexus Assistant. Hey Lexus, show my radio favorite screen. Showing radio favorites. Okay, Google. Launch Spotify. Sorry, that app isn't supported on this device. So if you have an error about an app, that means you need to check the app status on your phone. It might need an update. It may have offloaded to the cloud if you haven't used it in quite some time, or the app may have already updated and you just need to give some additional permissions for the app to operate correctly when mirroring to your vehicle. So let's come back and keep going through our Lexus interface system. Moving down to our Lexus Drive Connect cloud-based navigation system. That's the arrow icon on the Lexus interface menu bar. It does use Google points of interest. Another benefit for cloud-based navigation is that the cloud resource is updated automatically twice a month. So your maps are much more frequently updated than ever before. Top navigation voice commands to be aware of. Hey Lexus, get directions to, and then you can give the address or a point of interest name, or ask Lexus to show recent destinations to see that list, find a nearby point of interest, cancel the route, or even just ask Lexus to show your map screen if that's what you'd prefer to see. We're going to start off by going through items on the screen, and we'll do some voice command examples throughout the tutorial. So it is, of course, touch screen. If you move the map around, whether you zoom out or zoom in, pinching and pulling your fingers together or apart, you'll select recenter to get back to where your vehicle is actually located. You can zoom in with the plus and zoom out with the minus button. Now you can zoom in and out with voice command. Hey Lexus. How can I help you? Zoom in on the map. Okay, zooming in. Hey Lexus, zoom out on the map. Okay, zooming out. 
So pretty simple if you're driving along and you'd like to zoom and you don't want to take your hands off the wheel, definitely operate it by voice command. On the right hand side of the screen, you have a compass that will also change the orientation of the map just by clicking. The 2D flat view with north at the top of the map. Click again for a 3D view. So this will show you the north and south arrows and it's more of a three-dimensional view. You can use two fingers to adjust the tilt angle. Clicking to recenter. Click on the compass again for 2D facing the direction that the vehicle is driving. You'll know that you're in the 2D view because you'll see the north and south arrows on the compass and you'll have a circle of little dash marks around that compass. If you're in the 2D mode, you can still tilt if you prefer. You can shortcut to some navigation and map settings. You can turn off or leave on the traffic flow information and traffic flow information will show on screen green, yellow, and red for moving, slow, or bumper to bumper traffic. You can click to call the destination assist operator, or you can always do that by voice command. Just ask your Lexus assistant to call destination assist, because when you have the Lexus Drive Connect subscription, it not only includes the cloud-based mapping system, but it has the destination assist live operator support and the intelligent voice assistant that's connected to the cloud and always learning and has more advanced voice command capabilities in your vehicle. You can go to more detailed navigation settings and make additional adjustments here for map details and overlays and route options. We'll explore these items more when we come down to our settings menu. Notice that if I click settings to go back, I'll come to the beginning of the settings menu. So instead, click the arrow to come back to your map. Selecting about, you do need to scroll to see the different systems that are operating to power your Lexus navigation system. And click OK. Coming to the left, and we have a really popular feature, once you know it's there, this is only capable on the Lexus Drive Connect screen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Maps don't have this functionality, but see these arrows right here? That's a full screen mode. Click on that and you can hide those additional climate control buttons and it just makes your map gigantic. So it's really cool. The icon will change to arrows pointing toward each other to let you know that you can shrink that view and open up your climate menu at any time. A couple of things to know about the magnifying glass icon. When the vehicle is in motion, it changes to a microphone icon because not only is that your on-screen search feature, but that's another way to launch your Lexus Assistant. You can simply click to launch your voice assistant and give your command, or click on the icon and then click the tiny keyboard image for navigation search. You can begin to type in a search. Select from the suggested items list. And to save a favorite, before you've started to drive, clicking save will add that to your favorites. To share, you must have your phone only connected for Bluetooth. It cannot be operating for wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And if you choose to call, it does have the capability of switching from the Lexus functionality to the phone feature in your Apple CarPlay operating system. From this screen, you can launch your destination. So if you've clicked to call and then ended the call like I did, you'll see that you need to re-enter your destination and then you can launch your directions or just start to drive. Click. Proceed to the highlighted route. Go now. Once you're on the route, you'll be given turn-by-turn -turn instructions. In this section, you'll see how long the trip will take, the amount of miles, and your approximate arrival time. 
If you click the drop down arrow, you can end the trip. You can also click to add a stop. Starbucks near me. I found 15 results along your route. The first is Starbucks at 500 Rayford Road. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. Would you like to add it as a stop or start a new trip? Add it as a stop. Adding Starbucks as a stop. So now we have two stops along our route. Proceed to the highlighted route. Now our first stop is four minutes away, about 1.6 miles. If I click that drop down arrow again, before where it said add stop, now it says edit stops. If I select that, I can grab the handlebars and reorder my trip and then the change will be reflected on the right hand side main screen and I'll click save. Proceed to the highlighted route. If I want to share my ETA, I'm going to get this message that says no device connected. We do of course have a device connected. But sharing your ETA requires your phone to be only connected using Bluetooth, not connected using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Now your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless connections use Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi ad hoc connection to make that mirroring possible without a cord. But when you do that, you override the Bluetooth only system and Sharing ETA through the Lexus Maps is operated with a Bluetooth only connection. Coming back to our drop down menu, and we can see the routes that are available to us. And if you have different route options, obviously this trip is not very far away, but you can see more information about alternative routes. And because we've got Google points of interest with our Lexus Drive Connect system, we have details about that particular point of interest. So they tell me, are they open? Are they closed? What are their hours? And then I can even see a Google rating. So we can cancel our trip by clicking end trip from the drop down menu and on the right hand side of our map screen or what's my favorite way by voice command. Hey Lexus, cancel my navigation. Canceling trip. Super simple. You can also search for addresses by typing on screen. And you'll see suggestions for locations across the top, or you can just search by voice command using your Lexus assistant. Hey Lexus, get directions to 9600 Woodlands Parkway in the Woodlands, Texas. I found 9600 Woodlands Parkway. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to 9600 Woodlands Parkway. And we're on our way. Proceed to the highlighted route. Taking a look at your Lexus app, locate the Find icon on the bottom right hand corner of your menu. Then select Destinations. This is where you can view, edit, or add your home address and work address. You can also add or edit favorites right on screen. Select Done, select the arrow to go back. You can choose to send items to the car or edit and delete. Select Done when you're ready. Select the arrow to go back. And then you can scroll down to Recent Searches. Select an item. You can remove or save and choose to send to car. Select the arrow to go back and click the X to close. You can also search for a destination and save it to your favorites or send it to your vehicle.
If you've sent a destination to your vehicle and then you hop in the car and turn the car on, you'll see that destination pop up on screen ready for your next drive. And remember that in your Lexus app, there's a find feature and in that are destinations. That's where you program your home or work address. Well, guess what? They're right here on screen. You can even manage favorites in the destination feature on your Lexus app. But if you've programmed home or work, you'll be able to see them here. And that's another reason why signing out to guest mode is important if you're going to valet park your Lexus, because this personalized information won't be available when the vehicle is in guest mode. But we have home, work, and favorites available right on screen. Now you can save a favorite through the system in the vehicle, but at the moment you can't program home or work through the main screen, only on the Lexus app. You can come to Recents, Coming to send to car, these are items that I've searched for in the destinations feature in my Lexus app. And then I marked them as send to car and I'm able to send them to the car so that I can use them later. This is a great feature if you're going on a trip and you wanna sit at home and plan things out, plug in addresses in your phone and then send them to your car. You can also click to edit. So if you don't need these in this list any longer, you can just click the minus button to remove. Click save to save your updated list. Selecting go back. And we have some frequently searched points of interest available. Food, nearby fuel, parking, and hospitals. If you have a low fuel warning, you'll have a drop-down notification on screen with the option to select from a list of nearby gas stations. Just click to select the gas station that you would like to go to and your Lexus Drive Connect navigation system will route you there. When you're looking at the fuel gauge for the instrument panel, make sure to note that the outside line is the indicator that has full at the top and empty at the bottom. The inside line with the stacked segments is your actual fuel gauge level. Clicking the X to close. Now let's take a look at our Lexus audio system. Just click on the music notes in the Lexus interface menu. My top audio voice command tips are to ask Lexus to show my radio favorite screen or to tell Lexus what I'd like to listen to. For example, hey Lexus, I want to listen to First Wave on Sirius XM, or hey Lexus, tune to channel 33, or tune to 99.1 FM, things like that. Let's take a look at the menu items on the left-hand side. Our first item is our favorites. One of the things that I really love about the new Lexus interface radio is that your favorites stay with your profile. So when you connect to another Lexus interface vehicle, whether it's a future car or a loaner vehicle, your radio favorites will be there for you and you don't have to keep searching for radio stations or enter your favorites every time you get a new car. Let's talk about how to tune the radio so that you can find a station and favorite that station. Right here, we have the word tune. We can then choose our source. Do we want to tune to an FM or AM station or a Sirius XM channel? If numbers are not available, they'll be grayed out. And as you start typing, other available numbers will become clickable. If you make a mistake, you have a go back arrow, just click that and then enter the correct number. If you'd like to favorite this station, just click the heart. If you've made a mistake, you can select undo or just deselect the heart and that will be removed from your favorites list. Once you have favorites in your favorites list, notice that when we're in full screen view, our favorites push to the left. Let's take a look at that. When we have favorites selected at the top and our favorites appear on the right hand side in a tile view, 
you can just click on an item to play that item and it will open up full screen. Or if you see station or channel information across the bottom, you can click on that to open to full screen. Whenever you have full screen view on the right hand side, the tile layout of your stations pushes to the left and it shows as a list view. From list view, you can edit your favorites. Just click edit and you can remove a favorite or you can rearrange favorites. Scroll to a station or channel that you would like to move. Look for the handlebar on the left-hand side. So that's the three little bars. Touch and hold, you'll hear a beep and it lifts up that particular item. Just slide it around until you have it where you want it. So you can drag and drop, rearrange, and delete. Whenever you're done, click Done Editing. Select Radio with the left-facing Go Back button to come back to our main radio screen and come down to FM Radio. If you don't have your station numbers memorized, you can always search within FM Radio. You can now search all stations recently played or all of the stations that are available in your area. This is great if you're traveling and you're not familiar with the stations in that area, just come here and search all stations or search by music type. So search by genre and you'll see stations that are available playing that particular content. A cool tip from part one of our deep dive tutorial, locate the mode button on the steering wheel or in the head up display, then push and hold the mode button. If you are listening to AM or FM and you push and hold the mode button, it will mute the audio and push and hold again to unmute. Coming back to radio and you'll see the same type of setup for AM radio, recently played at the top and all available stations below. If you are on a drive and you feel like you've driven out of range, you may want to click refresh so that the system can find local signals and refresh and create your new station list. You'll see the circle icon as your update indicators. You'll see the circle change from blue to gray as it progresses through the station list update. And when it's complete, it will tell you station refresh complete, and you'll know you have correct stations that are available where you're driving. You also have a genre search on the left-hand side. Pushing to go back and select Sirius XM. So Sirius XM has been sorting by genre for a really long time. So you also add this capability of recommended channels. So they kind of based on what you already listen to with Sirius XM, they'll make suggestions for you. Then you can select broader categories like music and then drill down from there. What genre within music would you like to listen to? And all of the channels that apply to that genre will show up in a tile layout on the right hand side. For music, sports, news, talk radio, or select all channels if you'd like to see all of the available programming for your particular satellite radio subscription. You can also select listening history if you were listening to a channel that you really enjoyed and you kind of forgot to save it. You could just check back to your listening history and search to see what that channel might have been and then you can go back to it. Notice that satellite radio can be paused or played by clicking on the icon on screen or with the mode button on your steering wheel. So to pause, you'll push and hold. You can just press and hold the mode button again to play. You'll even see on screen when you make the change. When the audio content is playing, you'll see the pause icon. And when you've paused the audio, you'll see the play icon. You can also select related or notify me. 
if you choose related, you're going to see other channel suggestions pop up on the right hand side. So these are other things you might like based on this particular channel. So then you could select those, listen, save them as a favorite, whatever you prefer. When you select notify me, you can choose to be notified if this song is playing on another channel or if that artist is playing on another channel. So it'll give you a notification on screen asking, would you like to go to this other channel to listen? You can click OK to save. You can undo if you feel like you've made a mistake. Or if you select notify me again and come to manage, that shortcuts you to the SiriusXM settings in your main settings menu that are located in sound and media. This is where if you have allowed for artist and songs notifications, once you've started adding items to that list, you'll see the alerts that have been set. Just click edit if you would like to delete all or just delete a particular item. And if you feel like, oh no, actually I do wanna be notified about that, just click cancel and done editing. Then to come back to your Lexus interface menu, just click the music notes. And to get back to that full screen view, click the bar at the bottom of the screen. I'd like to show you how to quickly locate the radio ID, selecting radio to go back, and then select tune. Choose Sirius XM and then type zero. When you type zero, that's going to locate the radio ID for you. Just keep in mind that it's not possible to access this screen when you're talking on the phone connected to the vehicle. If you need to locate your radio ID while you're talking on the phone, come to settings, sound and media, Sirius XM, help and support. And there's your radio ID and listener care number right on screen. Another item on screen is your source feature. On our previous model vehicles, source included AM, FM satellite, Bluetooth audio, CD, things like that. The source menu is a little bit different for Lexus Interface. You won't see a CD player source because there is no longer a CD player on the RX. It has radio as its own source, if you click radio, you'll come back to your main radio screen and then you'll either operate from favorites, tune, or choose a radio source, FM, AM, or Sirius XM. Come back to source and you'll see your phone's audio shortcut for, in this example, Apple CarPlay because it's an iPhone. When your phone is connected for Bluetooth only, you'll see that audio content from your phone will be connected via Bluetooth, as opposed to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It just depends on your device and how you've chosen to connect it to the vehicle. Then you have streaming music services available as their own source, Apple Music or Amazon Music. Those require paid subscriptions for those services, and you can either have the AT&T Hotspot subscription to support that streaming content, or you can use one of the other connected services bundles that Lexus has made available in order to stream this type of data. Or you can always just stream that content through those those apps through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that don't require an additional subscription. Coming down to the phone icon in the Lexus menu. Let's talk about some phone system basics first. Then we'll look at how the phone operates with a Bluetooth only connection and a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connection. If your phone has been set up for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you won't actually even need to click on the Lexus interface phone icon because you'll just use the phone app that's in your phone's device system on screen. So the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto system. If your phone is connected for Bluetooth only, then you'll use the Lexus interface phone icon to operate your phone in the vehicle. And your phone's going to work and look more like our previous generation multimedia system. 
And now let's look at our phone's operation in the vehicle. When your phone is connected for Bluetooth only and you press the telephone button on your steering wheel, you'll open your recent calls on your main screen. Press the phone button again and you'll dial that most recent call. And then you'll have Thank an you opportunity to hang up from the steering wheel or on the main display. When your phone is connected for Bluetooth only, if you select devices, you'll see the device letting you know the device name, the type of connection, and that it's also a primary device. You can select manage devices if you need to remove or change the type of connection that you're using. If you have text messaging turned on in the Bluetooth connection for your vehicle where it says show notifications, you need to make sure that that feature is turned on. Texting through Bluetooth in the vehicle is possible. It's not quite as robust. So if you do a lot of texting in the vehicle, I highly recommend that you connect for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto rather than Bluetooth only. To restore your connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, come to Settings, select Bluetooth and Devices, select your phone's device, then toggle to Use for Apple CarPlay. And for an Android phone, of course, it would say Use for Android Auto. And now we're reconnected. Our phone system icon shows at the top of our Lexus interface menu again. And just click to open. For Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, when you select the phone icon, it might take you to a large, mostly blank screen. There is a shortcut back to your Apple CarPlay phone feature right in the middle. Just click to open. However, there are two quicker ways to get to your Apple CarPlay phone feature. You can use your phone's voice assistant from any screen in the Lexus interface system or the Apple CarPlay system, or use the phone button on your steering wheel. Either the up arrow for vehicles with a head up display or the telephone hard button if you have a phone button on the left side of the wheel. Just press one time and you'll see your phone feature in Apple CarPlay right on screen. If you're on the Lexus interface system and you have your Android phone connected to the vehicle, and you click on the phone icon on the main screen, you're going to just see this big white screen with a shortcut back to your phone's operating system in Android Auto. You can click to open, or remember, you can just use your Google Assistant to make a call or send a text by voice command. A software update that's been released recently has changed what happens when you push the telephone button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Pressing the steering wheel phone button two times, the first press will open Android Auto, and the second press will open your phone feature. Or just use your Google Assistant and make a call or send a text by voice command. Now click on the car icon to open our vehicle features menu. You'll have different items in the vehicle features menu depending on the equipment on your Lexus. So if your screen looks a little different from mine, don't worry, I'll try to cover as many screen options as possible. Right now, I am in an RX 500H and it is very decked out. So we're going to see a lot of different features and controls. Let's check it out. The first item on our vehicle feature screen is the drive mode selector. So we don't have a dial anywhere anymore. It's all right on screen. When you change drive modes, you'll see some graphics change on your multi-information display around your speedometer tachometer area, and you'll have graphics change on the main screen. Taking a look at the graphic, going from normal to sport, you'll see more information about how this mode changes the responsiveness and drive feel. On the multi-information display, going from normal to sport, you'll see a very dynamic theme change. The drive mode name is in the lower left-hand corner and we have a red lighting theme. Coming to eco, and we have a blue lit theme. 
The theme name shows as ECO on the bottom left corner. And again, you'll see the indication on the main display letting you know more about how the vehicle is going to respond in this particular drive mode. ECO mode tries to give you the most fuel efficient drive. If we come to custom mode, things are going to gray out and then you'll make different selections. We can adjust the powertrain from sport, normal, or eco. Suspension, sport, or normal. Just click OK after you've made your selection. And on this vehicle, we can also adjust steering, sport, or normal, and click OK. For the air conditioning adjustment, you can adjust normal or eco. Depending on where you live, you may or may not want to make this adjustment. Totally up to you. I'm going to select OK. And then rather than clicking Go Back, which will take us into our main settings screen, click on the vehicle icon to come back to your drive mode. When you have made custom changes, you're not going to see that graphic change in the image above. So don't worry about that. As long as you've made your customizations on the right hand side, the system will remember. And you'll know that you're in custom mode. You'll see the custom theme name on the bottom left corner. If your RX has power folding back seats, select seat controls. You can either select fold all, or you can fold in a 60-40 split. The right outboard seat and the center seat will fold together, or you can just fold the rear left seat. If you make a specific seat selection, you'll need to touch fold in order to give the command to fold the seats. Make sure the back seats are empty before you power fold them down from the front main screen. There are not weight sensors in the seats, so if you have someone or something back there, the seats will still fold. So make sure that your seats are empty before you fold them down. You'll have the message, seat adjusting now on the front screen. And now on screen, you'll see the option to fold all if you would like to fold that other seat down. You could select it individually or you could raise all seats. It's not possible to leave the center section up by itself. Selecting fold all and all your back seats fold down just like that. So cool and raise all. Nice and easy. If you've selected to fold or raise the seats and you cancel partway through the operation, you're going to hear an alert. It will eventually time out, but you want to make sure the seats are clear of people or items and then complete the process. To take a look at your driving assist features, you can either open the shortcut and then scroll to driving assist or click on the vehicle settings icon and open your full driving assist menu there. And you're able to see all of your driving assist features. You can turn each one on or off here. When they're black and white, they are off. When they're blue, they are on. Keep in mind that this is just an on off. This is not where you would customize these settings. Moving across the top row, the lane departure alert system is the most basic level for your lane monitoring system. When you turn lane departure alert off, the icon will also turn off on your multi-information display. Turning it back on and the icon will turn back on. When lane departure alert is turned on, the system is using the front camera to look for lane markers on the road that you're traveling on. And if you're not using your blinker and you start to float toward a lane, it's going to give you an alert and it can even give you a little nudge in the right direction to help you stay back on course. If you are using your blinker, you'll override the system and you won't have a correction as you change lanes.
On the previous RX, there was just one place to turn the lane monitoring system off or on, right from the steering wheel, but now you have more control. You can turn lane trace assist off and on from the steering wheel, but lane departure alert is controlled separately through the driving assist features on the main screen. This gives you more customization, and more support for day-to-day -day driving. So when you're looking at the icons on your multi-information display, this is the Lane Trace Assist icon, and this is the icon for Lane Departure Alert. They're just slightly different. Lane Trace Assist has the straight lane markers, just like on the button on the steering wheel, and Lane Departure Alert looks like a vehicle leaving the lane. If your vehicle has Intuitive Park Assist, those are the sensors that beep at you if you start to get too close to something. Generally, they start beeping at about three feet away. Just keep in mind that the intuitive park assist or parking assist system is different from advanced park. That system adds more sensors and uses other pieces of equipment on the vehicle. If you turn off the parking sensors here, then you're turning off that beeping. When park assist is turned off, you'll also have a parking assist off icon in orange on screen. Parking support brake will give you the message parking support brake turned off. And there's also a kind of generic icon on the left hand side of the screen that's the vehicle in a circle. You're going to see this icon with a variety of other driving assist features if they're turned off. So if we turn our parking support brake back on, the message goes away and that icon goes away. Parking support brake is an optional feature that works in conjunction with the parking sensors and the rear cross traffic alert system and other safety systems on the vehicle to help mitigate a potential accident at low speeds, especially under circumstances like parking. There are a lot of systems that work together for this feature, so make sure to consult your owner's manual if you have more detailed questions about how the system operates on your RX. Blind spot monitor, we get the message and the icon. So the blind spot monitor really is looking into your blind spot. So if you can see the car right beside you, that's not what the blind spot monitor system is there for. The blind spot monitor is trying to see where you cannot. The new system has added an audible alert, so you'll still have the visual alert in the side mirror. It's going to light up solid if someone's in your blind spot, and it's going to blink at you when you have your blinker on. So if you've turned on your indicator to change lanes and someone is in your blind spot, you'll see that blind spot monitor icon flash in the side view mirror, and now you'll hear two chimes, just to give you an additional alert. Safe Exit Assist, also a message and the icon. So you'll notice there are a lot of different features that the vehicle would really like you to keep on to keep your Lexus as safe as possible while you're on the road. Rear Cross Traffic Alert, same thing, message and icon. Rear Cross Traffic Alert, which will beep at you and flash the icons in your side mirror if traffic is detected crossing behind your vehicle while you're in reverse. Rear camera detection off or on. With the available rear camera detection feature when the RX is in reverse, if a pedestrian is detected behind the vehicle, you'll see arrows light up and they kind of flash across the screen. You'll also hear an alert. Proactive driving assist, it's coming off by default in a lot of areas. Just click to turn it on. This is only active when you are not using cruise control and it basically tries to keep you from tailgating. So it tries to keep you from coming up too quickly behind another vehicle. It's also looking on the sides, so that's why you'll see kind of these little bubbles, so a little buffer zone at the front and the sides of the vehicle. When that feature is on, you'll see the icon in white on your multi-information display. 
If it's turned off, you will not have a big message telling you it's turned off. The icon will turn off on your multi-information display. You'll also notice the proactive driving assist icon turn off when cruise control is turned on because with dynamic cruise control, you are establishing your own following distance. When cruise control is turned off and proactive driving assist is turned on, it's going to maintain its own little buffer zone. Road sign assist. When that feature is turned off, you're not actually going to get a message on your display telling you that the feature is turned off. You just will no longer see speed limit signs, stop signs, things like that. The pre-collision system is designed to help mitigate an accident wherever possible. It will pre-tension the seat belts, prime the airbags, prime the brakes, give you lots of different warnings to try to help assist you in an emergency situation where the vehicle determines that a collision is highly possible. If you turn the pre-collision system off, you're going to get a lot of warnings. Let's take a look. A big message that says pre-collision system turned off and then you will have the pre-collision system off icon in orange on the right hand side. When you turn the vehicle off and back on, pre-collision will turn back on. Many of these items can be customized and we'll do that later when we come into our settings menu. For now, click the left facing arrow where it says vehicle and let's come back to our vehicle feature screen. Trip information, we can review our current trip information historic trip information, which of course right now, this is a car that literally only has a few miles on it. So we don't have a lot of data to show yet. You can also clear the data by clicking clear to reset. Just click vehicle and you'll come back to your main vehicle features menu. If you have a hybrid model, you'll see the energy monitor selection here which I talk about more in the hybrid tip section of part one of this deep dive tutorial series. Just click vehicle with the go back or the left facing arrow to return to the menu. If your RX has an all wheel drive system, you'll see all wheel drive listed in the vehicle features and you'll have this graphic that's active showing you the power split displacement as you drive. Just click to show tire pressure right on screen. If you come to vehicle alerts, this is where you'll see service related alerts for your vehicle. Trip information, energy flow, all wheel drive, and the tire pressure screens will all stay on when you leave the vehicle features menu and come back. Now let's come down and click on the gear to take a look at our main settings menu. At the top left, you'll see the current driver. To the right, you'll see saved profiles. And if you have more than one, you'll see which is designated as the primary driver. When the primary driver is actively connected to the system, you have the option to edit. When you edit, that's going to give you the capability of eliminating or deleting a profile. If you click on the minus symbol, you're able to delete a profile, including the primary if you'd like. Just click done editing. You can choose plus a person and do manual setup. And then you would follow the steps with that person's Lexus app login. Where you see refresh, have the system look for devices that have the Lexus app signed in. Let's check that out. Refresh. If you have another phone with the Lexus account signed in, you'll see them listed on screen as a detected profile. Then select the profile name and enter the PIN for that profile. Once you've entered the PIN, that profile will be able to be added to the vehicle. Whatever compatible customized settings they have will appear through the system. Notice it's asking, do you want to save as the primary driver? If you want to kick out the primary and make this profile the primary, you would select this box. Otherwise, you'll click continue. If you click don't save, then you're just going to be starting over.
So we'll click continue and this will allow us to add a new profile to the vehicle. It also gives us an option to pair a device. So we'll click continue, search for devices, and then follow the prompts to pair the phone to the system. Another important detail is that additional drivers will not do the add vehicle step on the phone. They will not have the vehicle in their app garage, but their account will be in the vehicle. If you're not sure what your Lexus PIN is, click on the profile icon on the top right hand corner of your app screen. Come to account and security settings. Give permission. If you see set pin, you'll select set pin. If you see reset pin, you already have a Lexus app account pin. You can either guess at what that is, just don't guess too many times or you will be locked out for a little while, or reset the pin. If you choose that, it is going to tell you they need to verify your identity for security reasons. So you will click confirm and then you'll have to sign back in to the app with your credentials, and then you'll enter your six digit PIN, and you'll enter it twice just to confirm the PIN in the system. Come back to the main Lexus interface screen. To switch from one profile to another, just touch that profile name. Here's our PIN again, very important to know your PIN. Also, after app updates or account updates, you may be prompted on screen for your PIN for security. So make sure you always save a PIN that's simple to remember. I'm being asked, do I want to adjust my seat position? Sure. If you valet park, choosing sign out to guest mode is a great privacy tool. Choose sign out to guest mode. You'll see that guest mode has been activated and then if you come to the Lexus navigation and you look at destinations, you'll notice that home and work are no longer available even if you've saved them in your personal driver profile and favorites and recents that are your personal trips or searches for navigation will not show up under the guest driving mode. So this is a great way to maintain privacy when you valet park. Then when you get back into your vehicle, just click the gear to come to settings, click on your driver profile name, and then enter your PIN. You don't have to click enter, just type in the six digit pin that you've saved in your Lexus driver security settings in your Lexus app. Coming to personal info, we'll see which driver is selected and which Bluetooth device is theirs. You can choose manage devices if you need to forget or disconnect from a device. Clicking the settings and go back arrow coming back to personal info. And remember, this is where we set up Face ID, we've linked our key, and we could also reset our settings if we prefer. And this is an additional spot where you can delete this driver. Coming to Bluetooth and devices, this is again where we manage the devices that are paired and connected to the vehicle. Clicking to go back, and coming to the general settings menu. You can turn the screen beep off if you'd like. If you do, you'll have no beeps at all. When you're touching clickable items on screen, you can also increase the screen sensitivity. The higher sensitivity is great to use in the winter if you wear gloves. Otherwise, one or two is just fine. Coming to date and time with a Drive Connect subscription connected to your driver profile, the new cloud-based Lexus navigation system allows the system to adjust the date and time automatically. The first and foremost is right at the top, set date and time by GPS. If we toggle that on, it's going to eliminate all of those other customizations because it's doing everything for you automatically, except for the choice of a 24 hour clock or reformatting the layout for your date and time. 
if we toggle off the set date and time by GPS, then we see the other features that we looked at previously. However, we add the capability of automatically locating us in our time zone and automatically adjusting for daylight saving time. If you're not using the set date and time by GPS, once you've made your selections for time zone and daylight saving time, even if your selection is set to auto, you can also then turn on set time automatically and the clock will adjust based on the selections that you've chosen. You may be asking yourself, why do I have to set the time automatically if I have already chosen auto for the time zone and daylight saving time? That's because you have the option of automatically adjusting based on your selections or manually adjusting your clock. Set the time manually if you would like to adjust your clock just a little ahead you can select set minutes to zero, 00 to reset to the top of an hour and OK to save. But of course, the easiest setting is always going to be set date and time by GPS if you have that feature available. Without the GPS connection through the Drive Connect subscription, we just need to make the selection ourselves. You'll also have the capability of choosing a 24 hour clock and you'll make the selections for time zone and toggle daylight saving time on or off, depending on the time of year. Scrolling down, we have two additional selections. You could choose to set the time automatically based on the time zone and your daylight saving time selection, or set the time manually if maybe you need a few more minutes just to make sure you're on time each day. And you can customize the date format to your preference. This is going to apply to notifications in the inbox for things like over the air updates, anywhere that a date might appear, you are able to choose your date format layout. You can clear the keyboard search history and coming to language and units, you can customize the language, English, Spanish, or French. You can allow the measurements the vehicle uses to be set automatically based on your regional location, and then it'll show you what it's using here. If you turn off the auto selection for that, then you can come down the list and customize if you prefer, including changing how the tire pressure readout shows. Click settings to go back. Coming to notifications, you can have drop down messages about software updates that are available for the vehicle. Vehicle suggestions can be selected to on, shown only at stop, or turned off. Vehicle suggestions are pop ups on the multi information display with reminders of things like you've left your headlights on with a suggestion to turn them off or that a window may be open, things like that. You can leave on or turn off the virtual assistant. You can choose to turn on navigation during phone calls. That means the voice will speak to you while you are simultaneously on a phone call. A lot of people don't actually like that, so it is off by default, and you would still have your visual navigation information on your main screen, your multi-information display, and your head-up display if your vehicle is equipped with a head-up display. Other customizations can be left on or turned off for turn-by-turn -turn instructions, traffic alerts, state border guidance, unverified roads. So typically that's going to be a dirt road or a road in a new neighborhood that has not been mapped yet and high occupancy lanes. These navigation customizations all apply to the Lexus Drive Connect navigation system. Navigation apps being used by your phone for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto are all customized within that particular app's settings on your phone. Coming to Wi-Fi, you'll see two different Wi-Fi items on this screen. The hotspot is a subscription service through AT&T. It allows passengers to connect devices to the internet using your vehicle's hotspot account. You can 
click to customize the password, view security selections, and if you choose connect without a password, you'll see a countdown clock at the bottom of the screen. That just gives your passengers the opportunity to connect to your hotspot for a short period of time without using a password. To exit the screen before it times out, you can select another menu item for Lexus interface or click settings. And when you come back to the hotspot, if you've left that screen during that two minutes of password free access to your hotspot, it's going to cancel that operation. If you select Wi Fi, Wi Fi allows your vehicle to connect to wireless networks. This will be required for certain large over the air updates that may become available for your vehicle. It does need to temporarily disconnect from the hotspot if you use a hotspot and wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and you can always reconnect again when you need to. Selecting to go back and come to display. You can toggle to turn the display off. You will immediately want to wipe down your screen. When you're ready to turn the screen back on, you can touch anywhere on the screen, but then the next touch needs to be in this box. Touch to turn screen on right there. So the system knows you're making this selection on purpose. There is a light mode and a dark mode for the screen now. Right now it's selected to automatic. So as it gets dark outside, it would go to night mode automatically. But I can choose to have the dark theme or nighttime mode all the time. It's all about whatever you prefer. You can also adjust the brightness of the display and the contrast. Coming to the camera selection, this will adjust the view that you see either from the backup camera while the vehicle is in reverse or from the 360 monitor if your vehicle is equipped with the panoramic view monitor. And you can adjust brightness and contrast and this just gives you an example. So as you make the change, your screen will just reflect that change right away. Selecting to go back and coming down to sound and media. The vehicle has an auto sound levelizer that adjusts the audio volume based on your driving speed that can be left on or turned off. When you have a phone connected for Bluetooth only, meaning you're not connected actively to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, when you come to the sound and media settings section, and you look at levels, you'll have additional sound setting levels available for different volume controls. Ringtone, new message volume if texting permissions have been turned on through your phone settings, and received call volume. If you are connected for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you will not be adjusting your volumes here because you make those adjustments in your phone. The system volume, so system voice, can be controlled here. How loud or soft do you want your Lexus Assistant volume? And then the driving assist volume actually controls the bong sound that's made after you click start at the beginning of the advanced park procedure. So if you feel like the sounds or tones that are happening during advanced park are too loud or too soft, you can make an adjustment right on screen. You can choose to turn surround sound off or leave it on. Select sound tuning, and this is where you can adjust the treble, mid-range, and bass for your audio. And then you can scroll to move the balance or fader to adjust the sound coming from the speakers in the vehicle. If you've made an adjustment and you would like to recenter rather than having to click on all the arrows, just click recenter. Coming to media, if you would like to search by voice with the Lexus Assistant to play music from streaming sources, you can choose either 
Apple Music or Amazon Music, that means you must be subscribed to the Apple Music or Amazon Music subscriptions, and you need to subscribe to one of the bundles that includes streaming music services from the Lexus app. One of the most popular ones is called Music Lovers, and that gives you the capability of streaming music from these services that you already have and enjoy, but you can have your Lexus assistant do it for you. At one point, it required that you have the AT&T hotspot to do this, but the software has now been updated and that hotspot is no longer required for streaming music services. Just click the X to close. You can turn off or leave on the display cover art and scrolling down, we have some settings for sources. Let's click radio. You can turn off or leave on display FM information, details that are being broadcast by the FM stations about the content that they're playing. You can also turn off or leave on the HD radio for FM or AM. Keep in mind that those digital broadcasts will show on screen only when you are in range for the HD signal. And if you turn that off, then they won't show at all. You'll just have the primary channel that is not a digital channel. You can clear your radio station history and you can turn off the enhanced metadata that pulls in more current artwork for album and artist artwork that shows on screen. Coming to Sirius XM settings, you'll see whether or not the account is active. You can allow notifications from Sirius XM to appear on screen. You can choose to block programming with explicit content, and you can leave on or turn off this really cool feature that's called Tune Start. When you have Tune Start turned on and you select a Sirius XM channel, it's going to start at the beginning of the song that's playing on that channel whenever possible. I just think that's really cool. And you can clear your listening history. Coming to sports, you can customize the teams that you would like to receive notifications for. Now, if this is off, you won't have the ability to edit or add a team. So make sure to turn it on, choose your sport, select edit, and pick your team. Then click OK, and now we'll receive notifications about games based on our customizations. Select music, you can turn off or leave on artist and song notifications. If this is turned on and you have told the system that you wanna be notified when you have a favorite song playing or an artist that you like and you've made that selection, it'll show here. Coming to help and support, and you'll see the listener care number for Sirius XM right at the top, and then your radio ID. This is important because they are going to ask you for your radio ID in order to send refreshed signals or connect your new vehicle to your Sirius XM account. Make sure to know that when you are looking for your radio ID, if you're talking to Sirius XM on the phone, and your phone is connected to the vehicle, this is the only spot that you can get your radio ID on the screen. And if you're not talking on the phone, you can tune to your radio ID through the tuner selection in the Lexus interface radio screen under Sirius XM. Selecting sound and media to go back and coming back to settings and opening navigation. Under preferences for map details, you can choose to leave on or turn off the speed limit information, the traffic incidents that can be reported where you'll have icons that show on the map if there is an accident or a road closure, free flowing traffic, so that's going to show as green, yellow, or red, depending on the traffic on that particular road or highway. You can also allow home, work, favorites, and nearby parking to show as points of interest. Keep in mind that setting up home and work, at the time of making this video, you're not able to set up home or work through the Lexus navigation system in the car. You just set it up in your Lexus app and then it goes with you car to car. So if you hop in a service loaner that has Lexus interface, you can connect your profile, your radio favorites will be there, and your home and work will also carry over if that Lexus loaner vehicle 
has the Drive Connect maps turned on. You can select to calibrate the map if you need to. This is typically done when you get new tires or you change tires and wheels on your vehicle. This is a step that your technician would take at your Lexus dealer. We'll click cancel to move out of that screen and come to route options. I finally love how we have our route preferences or route options now. If you've had a Lexus before, it was a little bit counterintuitive on previous systems. Now it is very straightforward. Do you want to avoid toll roads, highways, ferries, seasonal roads, or border crossings? If so, then select. If you want to allow the navigation system to use these things, deselect, and they all come turned off by default. So by default, everything is going to be allowed when you are getting navigation from your Lexus Drive Connect system. Clicking settings to go back. Let's come down to vehicle customize. Making changes to your head up display is very simple to do. You can turn it off or leave it on. Adjust the brightness and adjust the view. What content do you want to see in the head up display? We can raise or lower and rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Coming to the meter selection, there are three meter display types. You'll see this change being made on your multi-information display. Type one, type two, and type three. Keep in mind that these screens may be a little bit different depending on which version of the RX you have. Our tachometer can also be customized. On a hybrid, we'll have the HV meter option and the tachometer option. If you choose auto switching, it's going to change back and forth for you automatically depending on drive mode and powertrain conditions. Select OK. Under display switching, this is another place that you can change what's showing on your multi-information display. Just scroll through by clicking the left or right arrows. This is the same information that you can select through the head up display right side arrows when you're on the display screen. Just click until you have the screen that you prefer. You can leave on or toggle off the stop light display. So notice that when I apply the foot brake, I see the graphic for the brake lights appear on screen. If I turn that feature off, then I'm no longer going to see the brake lights on my multi-information display. I think that's really cool. I like having that on, so I'm gonna leave that on. You can turn off that EV indicator. That's our little car that lights up with EV. You can turn it off or leave it on. You can also turn off or leave on the rev indicator and you can customize the RPM or rev settings. It's just like a dial. The default is 5,000 RPMs. We'll click OK and you can turn off or on the rev peak. Coming to our light settings, we can adjust the headlight sensitivity for the auto on feature. So you can choose to have the headlights come on when it's brighter, a little less bright, the normal time for them to come on, or do you want them to delay? Do you want it to be a little dark or darker outside before they come on? Completely up to you. There is an auto off timer, so when you exit and lock the vehicle, your headlights can stay on for 90, 60, or 30 seconds, or you can disable that by turning it off, or just click your lock button on your key a second time, and the headlights will turn off for you. Daytime running lights can be disabled here. The exterior lights also have an auto off timer. The exterior lights are not your headlights. These are puddle or welcome lights. Do you want them to stay on for 30, 15, or seven and a half seconds or not at all? 
and the interior lights also have the same selection, 30, 15, seven and a half seconds, or off. Now let's come to illumination. If your RX has the optional color thematic ambient lighting, you'll see color and theme here. Silky white is the default, but you can make a selection from any of the pre-programmed color themes or choose custom, click OK, and then select the color palette. Now you can drag and drop get the color that you want, and you'll see that change immediately in the vehicle. You can increase the brightness in all zones or customize the brightness by each zone. Maybe you want the front and the rear to be really bright, but you want it to be a little more subtle at your feet. Completely up to you. If you don't have the thematic color, you'll have soft white interior lighting throughout the vehicle with some brightness customizations as well. Let's come to door control. Auto unlock by shift to park. I like to change this one. This means that when you shift the vehicle into park, right now, all the doors are going to unlock. I don't like that very much. I like to turn that off. That means when I shift the vehicle into park, the doors remain locked. Then when I'm ready to get out, I can just push the door handle to exit the vehicle or click the unlock button and then unlock all the doors. Another option would be by driver door. That means when the driver opens their door, then the remainder of the vehicle will also unlock. Completely up to you, but that's my favorite setting door auto lock by shift from park. That means when I shift out of park and into driver reverse, the doors will automatically lock. I like that one. The wireless electronic key, so the key fob to press unlock, that means press the unlock button twice and it's going to unlock the entire vehicle. Lock when door opened. This is awesome. This helps you if you're doing camping or tailgating. You'd like to keep the entire car locked except the back door. It's great. So you can allow lock when door opened and you'll be able to leave the back door opened and lock the passenger doors. Open the back door and then you'll lock your vehicle with the lock button in the door handle. You're not able to use the smart access locking indentation on the outside of the door handle or the electronic lock button on your key fob. You do need to press the button in the door handle to lock the car. You'll see the green light turn on. Then just close the door. It's a great way to keep the passenger interior area secure while you've got access to the cargo area. It's awesome for beach camping and we could call this tailgate mode. You can also choose which doors that you would like to unlock with the smart access system. When you place your hand in the driver's door handle, do you want it to unlock all the doors or only the driver's door? Click OK after you've made your selection. And these are some settings for your key fob. If you've unlocked the vehicle from either the key fob or the smart access system on the door handle, but you don't open a door, the car will automatically relock for you after 30, 60, or 120 seconds. Or you can disable that feature by selecting off. This is not an auto locking feature for the vehicle. So if you've gone for a drive, turn off the car and exit the vehicle, you have to lock the car. It's not going to automatically lock for you. You can turn off or leave on the feedback lights, so the lights that flash, and you can turn up or down the feedback tone that you hear when you're locking or unlocking the vehicle. You can turn on or off the optional power back door and the hands-free mode. Hands-free, of course, is the available kick sensor. You can adjust the buzzer volume, soft, normal, or loud. And you can actually adjust the position of the opening height for the power back door to five different pre-programmed position heights. Or notice the selection here for manual because we have customized the height opening on the power back door. 
scrolling down and selecting boarding and exit. For the driver's easy exit, when you turn off the vehicle, you can make customizations to how much the seat slides full, partial, or off. Seat lift, so the seat bottom cushion, how much is it going to lift you up, full, partial, or off? With these two adjustments, depending on your saved driving position, if the seat is already very far back or high up, it may not make additional adjustments for you. Just be aware of that. You can also customize the steering column, tilt only, telescopic only, or tilt and telescopic. That's the one that I really like. So it will tuck the steering wheel up and away. You can also turn that feature off if you prefer the steering wheel to stay in place when you've turned off the vehicle. Coming back to the custom drive mode that we saw previously, this is where we were shortcutted to to set up our custom drive mode. Tire pressure settings. If you have two sets of tires, they will both show here. If the second set of tires is registered, it will be selectable on screen. Technicians will go through the process of registering new tires and a process after tire rotation. This is also where you can set the indicated air pressure and the current air pressure for your tires. Coming to the steering switch customization, they are talking about the touch sensitive arrow pads on your steering wheel if you have a head up display. Choosing the left side, the default is the audio layout, but you could choose climate or custom. If you choose custom, select okay, and then click a button to see what's available for that particular spot. So you could leave a spot empty, you could choose from mode or power regarding audio still, you could have some climate control customizations. So airflow mode, recirculating air, temperature controls. Notice that now we have up or down for temperature controls, and that would be on the left side of the steering wheel. So cool. We'll say OK. Then choose either left or right, and you can make whatever customizations are available from audio or climate. This is a really cool thing to do. Once you've really gotten to know the system, if you want to customize, you can. Otherwise, just select audio, which is the default, and click OK. Same thing on the right side, but here we have our display controls or custom. So notice that second screen that we have access to, because remember both right side and left side have two different menu screens that you can see and control. Only one screen on each side is customizable. If you click OK, touch a button to add, you can make customizations to turn on or off the head-up display, HUD mode, position adjustment, and my favorite, you can add a drive mode shortcut right to your head-up display. So if you're somebody who likes to drive in the normal mode most of the time, or maybe you've done a custom setup or you like sport mode periodically, just click, select OK. Now when you open that view on the head-up display, you'll be able to use that shortcut right away to access whatever your customization was. And in my case, it was sport mode. We can also shortcut the view monitor. That's pretty handy. Let's say OK to that. And there's our customization for view. Watch this. Push that view monitor button. And there we are, 360 panoramic view monitor. Coming back to our customizations and we'll go back to our default settings. Select options. You can turn on the winter glove mode. Just to make it easier to operate the touch sensitive controls on the steering wheel that operate your head up display if you're wearing gloves. Select vehicle customization to go back. Scroll back down to some climate settings. You can adjust the auto seat temperature thermostat to make it more or less sensitive by two additional levels, up or down. 
for each front seat. You can also increase or decrease the operation time for the auto feature for the steering wheel heater. And you can choose to have the AC compressor, so the AC mode, come on automatically with the auto mode setting. And you can increase or decrease the sensitivity of the smog sensor and select OK to clear. Coming to utility, you can leave on or turn off the rear seat reminder. That's the pop-up message that is triggered by opening a back door before you go for a drive. Also, when this is turned on, you'll hear eight beeps if you open a back door and then go for a drive, and then you exit the vehicle without checking the back seat, so without reopening a back door, and then you lock the car, you're going to hear eight beeps. You can choose to turn that off, but it is there as a safety feature, so you can leave that on, especially if you travel with children. If your vehicle has the optional power outlet at the rear, you can choose to turn that on if you plan to use it. Otherwise, you can leave it off. You can also turn it off or on in the shortcut menu. Make sure to note that the vehicle does have to be totally on to use the optional rear power outlet. When you turn on the accessory customize mode, that means you're requiring that the vehicle is on to operate the accessories. When you turn the car off, it's going to turn off everything, including the screen and the audio system. If you would prefer to have your main display and the radio be able to stay on until you open the driver's door, make sure to set accessory customized to off, allowing certain features to operate while the vehicle is turned off. So with ACC customized in the off mode, that means when we turn the vehicle off, our main screen and radio will remain on until we open the driver's door. You can adjust the active sound control, so the engine sound coming in to the vehicle from low, medium, high, or turn that off. There are some noise canceling components to active sound control, so keep that in mind if you choose to turn that feature off. Scrolling for a reset for scheduled maintenance reminder and the oil maintenance reminder. That's typically reset by your Lexus dealer after each service. And click settings to go back to our main menu. Now we'll come to driving assist. This is where we can make customizations to many of those driving assist features that we saw before. Let's open driver support. If your RX is equipped with the optional traffic jam assist feature, make sure to note that you must have an active Drive Connect subscription with dynamic radar cruise control turned on under about 24 miles per hour. The vehicle will slow down, then come to a stop, and then Instead of you having to tap the accelerator or click resume, the vehicle will resume driving for you. All right, the system knows that we are in a traffic jam. So smart. So it is accelerating for me as able and slowing me down, even coming to a stop. It also tells me that it is recording. Driver monitor recording can allow the camera to document while traffic jam assist is being used. You can turn that off or leave it on. Scrolling to proactive driving assist. So remember, proactive driving assist is only on when adaptive cruise control is off. If you're not using the radar cruise control, you can have some additional proactive steps that the vehicle can take to try to help mitigate a potential accident before the pre-collision system would take over. You can adjust the sensitivity, low, medium, or high. Medium is the default. And you can leave on or turn off. Steering assist, deceleration assist, this is the one that most people notice because it will feel like the vehicle is just slightly slowing down for you to help keep you from coming up too quickly behind someone. And obstacle anticipation assist. This is when the system is looking not only in front of you, but on the side of the road. 
it's a pretty incredible system, but if you're not familiar with it, it can feel a little different while you're driving. So you may want to just drive and experience it, make some customizations, and then if you don't like it, then you could turn it off. Dynamic Radar Cruise Control has the extended resume time capability. Keep in mind, this must be turned on for Traffic Jam Assist to operate. Some additional Dynamic Radar Cruise Control customizations. You can adjust the acceleration rate low, medium, or high. So what does that acceleration feel like? You can also turn off or leave on the guide message, and you can customize the reduce speed setting, off, high, medium, or low. You'll need to drive with each one of these adjustments to feel what this feels like as the driver, and then make the selection that you prefer. This is really a personal preference. Scrolling to the Lane Departure Alert System customizations, you can change the alert timing from default to earlier, and you have the steering wheel vibration or the audible alert for your alert options. Lane Change Assist can be turned off or left on. For Lane Change Assist to operate, when you put your blinker on, the system will use the blind spot monitor, other sensors and cameras on the vehicle to look in the blind spot and ahead of your vehicle to the lane that you would like to change to. If all is clear, it will assist you in making that lane change. There we go. You'll hear a little beep. Lane Change Assist. This is also where you can turn off the alert for the driver monitor if you prefer. So if the driver's attention monitor thinks that you are not paying attention and it needs to know that you are paying attention, it's going to give you a pop-up letting you know that you need to pay attention, meaning look forward. There are a variety of messages that can pop up, including a message that suggests that you sit up in a more upright, safe driving position. Coming to collision mitigation. For the pre-collision system, you can adjust the warning time. There's a default setting. You can have it warn you earlier or later, whatever you prefer. Front cross traffic alert is optional. If your vehicle has front cross traffic alert, you'll see a couple of settings here. You can choose to turn front cross traffic alert off or leave it on and adjust the alert timing if you prefer. You can have it alert you sooner or later. All right, front cross traffic alert is what you just saw and heard on screen. Your park assist volume is adjusted here. Just select to lower the sound volume or increase the sound volume. Let's take a look at blind spot monitor. Now you can adjust the support timing so the warning comes on earlier or later or leave it at the default setting. And they've added a buzzer alert you're not going to hear the buzzer alert every single time. If you have your blinker turned on, you'll hear two beeps. And you can, of course, adjust the brightness to the bright or dim setting. You can turn off or leave on the outside mirror indicators when safe exit assist is operating. And you can adjust the sensitivity for safe exit assist, low, medium, or high. Coming to notifications for driving assist. The road sign assist customizations have two different categories, speed customizations for detected speed limit information and other signs. Other signs include things like stop signs, yield signs, and right of way. The first customization you'll see is for excess speed. You could choose to have no alert, visual only, which would mean the speed limit sign would then change to an orange color if you've exceeded the speed, or visual and audible. The same is true for the other types of signs. Do you want no alert, visual, or visual and audible? For the excess speed notification, you can choose the notification level. That means when do you want to be notified? If you've gone one mile, three miles, or five miles per hour over the detected speed. Completely up to you. Scrolling down to the driver brake suggestion. 
Notice this is break, B-R-E-A-K, not B-R-A-K-E, not asking you to apply the brakes, but suggesting that you might need to take a break. This used to be called the sway warning. This is about the vehicle detecting that possibly you are a fatigued driver and it could make a suggestion for you to take a break. You could leave that on or turn it off. Selecting settings to go back, and let's come to voice and search. You can choose to turn off the wake word for your vehicle's assistant. If you turn this feature off, you'll need to use the button on the steering wheel or soft buttons on the screen to push and hold for your Lexus assistant or push and release for your phone's assistant. You can do this even if you have the wake word still turned on. It's just an option to turn that off if you prefer, but your assistant's still always available for you. Push and release for your Lexus assistant. Push and hold. I didn't get that. Could you try again? For your phone's assistant. Cancel. Or leave the wake words turned on and just say, hey Lexus. What do you want to do? To activate your vehicle's assistant. If you turn off the voice prompt. That means you're going to hear beeps instead of a spoken prompt. Here's how this operates. Hey Lexus, how's the weather today? So it's a quieter operation of the vehicle, but you do need to be confident in your voice commands so that you can easily use your Lexus voice assistant without her prompting or making suggestions. Let's come down to dealer info. This should already be populated for you, but you can customize and edit your preferred dealer information, and you can choose to clear this information by selecting delete dealer. Coming to info and security, if you would like, you can nickname or rename your vehicle. Just keep in mind that the name that appears here, whether it's Lexus RX or something you've customized, that's how your phone's device name will show up when you're searching for it in a list of available Bluetooth devices, Apple CarPlay devices, and connected systems that use that name as a point of reference. It's not going to sync up with the nickname customization that is available in your Lexus app settings. It would be great if they would refer back to each other in that way, but currently they don't have that capability. If you turn on the privacy lock, you're going to get the message, vehicle will require your Lexus app password if the head unit becomes disconnected from power. This does not mean that when you just turn the vehicle off, it's going to ask you for your password. This means if for some reason, maybe the battery was disconnected, then it's going to require a password to re-enable it. This is not what I would recommend if you're valet parking your vehicle and you would like to restrict access to content or information that could show on screen. If you need to reset the system and clear all personal data on the vehicle, the primary driver's profile must be connected. Otherwise, system reset will be grayed out and not accessible. Selecting software update, if you've had a drop-down notification that a software update is available for the vehicle, this is where you'll come to do that update. You can also review model information there's a lot of content here, just in case you're curious, or if your Lexus servicing dealer needs this data to perform an update. Usually updates are performed over the air and you're able to do them on your own. Some updates are larger and they'll require you to connect the vehicle to Wi-Fi. Clicking the X to go back. Coming to apps. Under the general setting for app installation, you can choose to reinstall all apps. These are not the apps from your phone. Any app on your phone that needs an update or a refresh permission needs to be performed on your phone itself. Coming to remote connect, if the remote requires an authorization, you can get a code here, but right now this vehicle is already authorized for remote connect. As a tip, if you're having trouble getting your remote to authorize, sign out of your Lexus app and then sign back in using your cell phone. You might just need an additional texting permission on your phone that is required for your remote connect feature to operate on that device. Clicking apps to go back and settings to go back. And that's it. We are done with our settings menu and all things Lexus interface. Now let's come down and take a look at our climate control system. You have airflow mode. Just toggle to select 
where you would like the air to flow inside the cabin. The optional front heated and ventilated seats. The first touch will trigger auto. The second will activate the manual mode with three levels of heat and three levels of fan for the driver and the front passenger. The first button press will always activate auto mode and then you can take over to adjust to your preferred setting. Also, the optional heated steering wheel has an auto setting, so the first touch will turn on the auto mode, or there are two levels for heating the steering wheel. If you click on the tab that says climate, that will shortcut you to climate concierge, turning everything climate control related into the auto mode, just with a click, you can select to turn it off, but you may see some features still in the auto mode. And if you do, just click to take over control of each setting. S-Flow is like a smart flow system and it's designed to direct air to occupied seats. The front passenger seat has a weight sensor and the back passenger seats, that airflow is triggered by the opening of a back door. So if you've opened a back door and your rear cabin passengers climb in, you should have air flowing throughout the entire vehicle as long as your vents are open. If you would like air to always flow throughout the entire cabin, turn off S-Flow. When S-Flow is on, air can be off to certain seats. Eco Heat and Cool, can be turned on or off to cycle off of the air conditioning compressor sooner rather than later. And you can turn on or off the windshield wiper de-icer if your vehicle is equipped. You can click to close or allow the screen to time out automatically. Just to the right is our shortcut menu. It looks like a little ice cube tray. We've already worked with the shortcut menu a little bit, but since it's right here, let's go ahead and finish it up. In fact, there are actually a couple of really neat climate control settings that are included in this menu. We have some frequently used items and two additional climate control convenience settings, max heat and max cool. Bundled in with that is a really cool feature called silent. If you select silent, you are going to have greatly reduced sound and notifications from navigation, music, phone, and additional car sounds, like the on-screen beep when you touch an item. Just deselect silent to bring back all of the volume settings that you have previously enjoyed. You can swipe to go to your additional pages, if your RX has a head-up display, you'll see some controls and customization shortcuts here. I go into that in detail in part one of this tutorial. Make sure to check it out if you need help with your head-up display. You have drive mode customizations right on screen, a security sensor that's not actually accessible on screen, but it is letting you know that you do have a security sensor on the vehicle, and the driving assist items to be able to turn off or on your driving assist features. Depending on the equipment on your vehicle, you will have one or two pages of driving assist features. Click to close or allow it to time out. Let's keep going with our climate controls. Select rear with the button that toggles you from front to rear climate control. When you select rear and everything is off, that means the rear climate is off. Make sure to note that in order to turn on the rear cabin climate, S-Flow must be turned off. When S-Flow is off and you click rear, you should see a temperature light up in the front driver's side temperature selection. Then your rear cabin passengers can operate the temperature settings on their own, or you can use the driver's temperature selector to set the temperature for the rear cabin. Or you can press rear, and if nothing is turned on, go ahead and press one of the rear temperature adjustment buttons. 
when rear is selected on the front screen and a back seat temperature button is operated, it will turn on the rest of the rear seat climate control system. And now we can adjust the climate for our rear passengers from the driver's side temperature dial. And our additional climate control features are located just below. Temperature controls for the driver and passenger, independent of one another. If a passenger temperature is adjusted and you'd like one temperature throughout the cabin, just click to sync the temperature. And then the temperature throughout the entire cabin will match whatever the driver has selected. Or just ask Lexus to do it for you. Hey Lexus, sync the temperature. Turning on sync mode. Super easy. Auto mode for the fan. If you turn on auto mode for the fan, the system will take over not only for fan speed, but airflow mode. So if you would like to resume control of fan speed, just click to take over and do the same for airflow mode. It's not possible to turn off the fan auto function by clicking it again. Once you turn it on, you need to take over control. Just click to have your fan settings where you prefer. You can even select to turn them off. Increase, decrease, clicking on the plus and minus, or just slide. Recirculating air or outside air. With outside air, that icon is going to be grayed out. With recirculating air, it's going to highlight in white and have a blue light just above. The AC compressor, when it is turned on, will also light up and have a blue bar above. Front defrost, just press on or off. And rear window and outside mirror defrost. These are just single large buttons. You can press anywhere to turn that feature on or off. Depending on the optional features on your vehicle, there are three different layouts of this section. If you have the 360 panoramic view monitor system, you'll see the view button here. If you also have the advanced park feature, this is the layout you'll see, the 360 monitor and the advanced park icon. Without those two features, you'll have a matching piano black trim piece here. The 360 panoramic view monitor uses four cameras. You'll have a camera at the front of the vehicle, the rear backup camera, and a camera located under each side mirror. To turn on the view monitor, just press the view monitor button. You'll have one view in park and a different view when the vehicle is in drive. Either way, you have a menu bar on the left-hand side, and this menu bar is specifically for the view monitor. Pressing the view monitor button while in park, we have our see-through view, where it looks like you're looking through the inside of the vehicle to the surrounding area, and then pulling out to the top for an overhead view. Now, there's not actually a camera above the car. We have our four cameras surrounding the car, the front and rear cameras and the two side cameras. And it just stitches this image together to make it look like you have a camera above the vehicle. Just click the view icon and this will change you to an overhead 360 view. When you're in park and you push the view monitor button, you would have this view you can also pause or play. If you need to get a better look at a particular area, just click on the gear at the bottom to shortcut to the panoramic view monitor settings. You can turn on and off the cornering view, the view under the vehicle, which looks like a see-through view. It accomplishes that by stitching images together as you drive forward or in reverse. So it's things that you've actually just driven past, but it looks like you're currently driving over it. It looks like the vehicle is see-through, very cool. 
You can also turn on or off the Lexus 3D Park Assist, and you can make some customizations to the Park Assist distance. You can change it from standard to near for the front or rear of the vehicle. If you make a change, you'll notice the indication of that buffer zone change on screen, just to help you have a better understanding of the change that you're making. Click OK to go back and save any changes. You can also change the vehicle body color. This is a really cool feature that a lot of people like to do. You can make whatever selection that you prefer and click OK to save. You can leave on or turn off the moving object alert and customize the warnings when auto display mode is enabled. I like to leave all of this on just to get all the help I can from my Lexus. Just click camera view to go back and you'll see the customized color and click the X to close. Shift into drive and if your panoramic view monitor is in the auto mode, then it's going to automatically turn on for you. Now this will happen automatically at lower speed. So if you are in traffic or coming up to a stoplight, it's going to turn on for you, but only in the auto mode. And just keep in mind, you just need to make this selection for when the vehicle is in drive so that it will come on automatically because when you shift into reverse, you're going to automatically see your backup camera view right away. You're already going to see your backup camera view right away. So again, we have our settings gear that would shortcut us back to our settings menu for the panoramic view monitor and advanced park systems, depending on the equipment on your vehicle. But just above that, we have an icon for a camera and the letter A automatic mode for our cameras. If you see a line through the automatic mode, that means your camera system is not going to turn on automatically for you. So let's make sure that you don't see a line and you'll know that you're in auto mode. You can customize the markers that you see on screen. I like to leave the dynamic yellow lines that help you to see your intended path as you turn the wheel. And you can change some view options. So a more narrow view and the straight on view. And all I'm doing is clicking to toggle through those settings. Right now we have that cornering view. When you have cornering view activated, you'll see the cornering view icon in the menu bar, and you'll see the cornering view image on the main screen on the right hand side. This view will also happen automatically when you're making tighter turns at low speeds and your view monitor system is activated. So if I straighten out the wheels, you'll see the cornering view is hidden and we're back to our selection of either a narrow view or a straight on view. So notice that with the narrow view, we have some indication about where the sides of the vehicle are. Most people prefer the straight ahead view with the 360 on the left hand side. And you can click to zoom at the rear or front of the vehicle if you need to zoom in to see what is around you and click the X to close or just start to drive. So if we drive a bit, when you get up to speed, you'll see that your normal screen will come back on. So if you've had that on the map or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that's what's going to come back on screen. When the vehicle is in that see-through view mode, if you see sections that are blacked out, it just means that images were not available to stitch together for that portion of the drive. Once there are enough images to stitch together, it will appear that you are seeing through the RX. Shifting into reverse to take a look at our rear backup camera. And once again, we have a menu bar 
on the left hand side. So very similarly, we can toggle through view options, so a wide view or a more direct view. We can customize the lines that we see. So if you've turned off the yellow intended path lines, you'll have the red line, which is letting you know you're getting pretty close to that bumper. And then the blue lines are letting you know the extreme turn angle. So meaning if you turned the wheel all the way to the right or all the way to the left, that would be your intended path. The side blue lines are when the wheels are straight and this blue dash is the center of the vehicle. Just click to toggle through options. The least amount of lines possible is the red line. So you can't actually turn all the lines off. Click again and now you'll have the yellow intended path lines and the center dash mark line. If you need a dynamic center line and dynamic turn angle lines, click again and you'll be back to what we usually see. So when the yellow intended path lines line up with the blue straightaway lines, you'll know your wheels are straight. And then Click on that settings gear on the bottom of that menu, and then you're right back to the customizations for the view monitor and advanced park, depending on the equipment on your Lexus. The advanced parking feature uses 12 ultrasonic sensors, six sensors across the front, and six across the rear. When you're ready to start using your advanced park feature, I recommend that you use it for the first time in a more open area where you're not trying to park between cars just so that you can start getting used to how it operates. Drive up to an area where you would like to park and get a good idea of which spot you might like to park in. I'm going to keep the vehicle in drive. My foot is pressed on the brake. I press the advanced park button. I'd like to reverse in, and this is the spot that I'd like to park in. Notice that I can even switch from perpendicular to parallel, but I want to park in a perpendicular fashion. I'll click start. Your blinker will flash, and you'll be given the message to remove your foot from the brake, and then it's going to start moving the vehicle. Now it does tell us that it's going to move forward first. So don't be surprised by that if you're reversing in and it starts by going forward. It just needs to position the vehicle appropriately for the spot that you have selected. My hands are not on the wheel. My foot is not on the brake, but I'm hovering over the brake. I'm hovering my foot over the brake and it says moving forward to align. It's just getting me nice and centered in that spot whenever it can. My indicator light will remain on until the procedure is complete. If it needs you to break, it will tell you. Advance, park, finished and the vehicle has automatically been placed in park. So if we take a look at our shifter, P is selected, we are in park, and my foot is still off of the brake pedal. So I like to kind of hover right near the brake just in case if I need to do an emergency stop. All right, let's park between two other vehicles. Let's check this out. So here's what I like to do. Pull forward so that you can position your vehicle for the spot that you've selected. You can consider lining up the door that's closest to the open spot that you're choosing. With the vehicle in drive, we will push the advanced park button and it sees our spot that we would like, giving us our example on the main screen. When you're ready to go, you'll press start. You'll hear a tone and the blinker will automatically operate for you. Okay. 
and it's going to take you through step by step. Make sure to hover your foot over the brake. Since we have two cars around us, we're going to see our parking sensor information. And if you needed to make an emergency stop, you'd apply your brake. Parking sensors and advanced park is finished and the vehicle has been placed into park. We did it. If you have a parking spot that you use on a regular basis that is either not marked or not marked well, then you can register that parking spot. So I have an example for you where a parking spot has been created where one never existed before. So the markers on this spot are a little odd. Let's see if we can register this as a saved parking spot. And believe it or not, that box with all the diagonal lines is a space I'd like to save. So I'm going to press the advanced park switch. It's going to identify all kinds of different things because this is not a normal parking lot parking space. I'm going to select the plus P. I want to register a parking spot. It's going to be, I'm going to choose parallel parking and then I'll select to back into the space. If something's grayed out on screen, that means that action is not available. I'll select what I want, and yes, that's the spot I'd like. I'm going to click OK, and now it's going to give me an overview. I want to actually scoot it back a bit, so I'm going to make an adjustment with my arrow pad. And then I'm going to say OK. This is going to be spot number one that I would like to save. Here's the example of where my vehicle is now and then kind of a ghosted image of where I would like it to be. Here is my purple box where I am going to try to park. Let's check it out. I've clicked start. My indicator light is on and now I'm going to release the brake to move and I will start out by moving forward. I will not be in charge of the wheel, but I will hover over the brake just in case. Now we're backing into the spot. We have to navigate other cars and a light pole. In a very strangely marked parking spot. Wow, nice job, Lexus. Okay, moving forward just to align in the space. And we're done. Now I need to save my registered spot. So it's asking me to check for surroundings, adjust the parking space with the direction keys. So again, we could make tiny adjustments, but it's exactly where I would like it to be. So I'm going to click register and save this space as parking space number one. Registration complete, so cool. Now if I press the advanced park button, and come to settings, scrolling all the way to the bottom of the advanced park settings list, clear registered parking space. This is where you can go if you would like to delete or clear spaces that you've registered to the system. Just press settings and the left facing arrow to go back and click the X to close. You can also exit from a parking place. When the vehicle is in park to exit from a parking place, press the advanced park button. It will tell you brake pedal is not pressed, so you'll apply the brake pedal. And then it's going to give you a little animation asking, do you want to exit to the left or exit to the right? And then if it were available, you could also reverse to the right or reverse to the left. Of course, in this case, we would be reversing into a field. That would not be a good idea. So there is still some driver participation required. Make sure to choose wisely. So let's exit to the right. Release brake to move. And now it's going to inch out a bit. 
and then it's going to tell you press the brake pedal and check the path. That means we need to actually look around, make sure that it's safe to proceed out of this parking place. And then you'll release the brake pedal to move. Lift your foot up off of the brake. We already told the vehicle we want to exit to the right. Wow. That was wild. And it says you can exit by moving the steering wheel. That does not mean exiting the spot. It's already exited the spot for us. It means exit from the advanced park procedure. So now we're taking over. So we're back to being in charge of the accelerator, the brake, and everything else. Once you've turned the advanced park system on, if you decide that you don't want to use it, all you have to do is start driving and then it will turn itself off. It's going to say it's not available or you can just push the button again and it will say advanced park switch pushed, advanced park cancel. To access settings for advanced park, Turn the system on by pushing the button with the letter P. Just press the gear to open up settings. You can adjust the speed for the parking procedure, fast, standard, or slow. You can also adjust the detected range, standard or far. You can set a preferred parking method, either perpendicular or parallel. You can also choose a parking direction, either to reverse in or go forward. So the nose of the vehicle going in first. The RX does have the capability of doing either, so why not reverse in? You can also choose a preferred exit direction and you would make that selection for perpendicular parking, that's the P-E-R abbreviation, to exit the parking place from the left or the right. And for parallel, would you be typically parking in an area with parallel parking and you would need to exit from that spot from the right or the left? We're gonna say left and OK to change. We do have a slide bar indicating that we have more adjustments or customization. Parking path adjustment, the parking path. So if you are feeling like it is going too far out or too far in, you can adjust that. And you would just click the plus or the minus or just leave it on the default setting. Clicking on the help icon, you'll see the message that when the tire size has changed since the vehicle was purchased, so either your tires have become worn or you may have a new set of tires, you might need to adjust the parking path because the system was calibrated for the original set of tires with their full tread. This is just something to keep in mind for your vehicle ownership over time. Just click the blue left facing arrow to come back to the parking path adjustment and click OK to clear and move back to our advanced park settings screen. Coming to road width adjustment, for normal advanced parking, would you like it to be set for standard, slightly narrow, or narrow? We'll leave it for standard as the default. You'll also be able to select this same customization for any unmarked parking place that you have already registered in the system. Press OK to clear. The parking position for adjusting the vehicle in a space. Would you prefer to be a little more in the space or not? It's completely up to you and you'll make this adjustment twice. You can either leave everything at the default settings or you can adjust this for parking forward in a spot or reversing into a spot. And again, do you want it to bring you deeper into that space or not? Select OK. If you have a rear accessory mount attached to the vehicle, you can include a buffer for up to 40 centimeters so that you have that in mind when the vehicle is 
self-parking. In this case, we don't have a mount on the vehicle, so we can clear out of that particular setting. Select OK. If you have registered a parking place, you can come to this area to clear any of those memorized parking places. Notice that parking space number one is saved and we can choose to remove. So it says clear space number one, yes, and now it's clear. You can either click the X or click the left facing blue arrow to return to the settings menu and click the X to close. On the standard size screen display, you'll have a very similar layout, but the auto mode for climate control has been moved to the left temperature dial and the sync command has been moved to the right temperature dial. Just press to turn on auto and then take over fan speed to turn that feature off and press sync to sync the temperatures throughout the vehicle. The numerical display of the temperature is not touchscreen, so just turn the dial or give your voice command to make that change. However, the fan speed and recirculating or outside air controls and AC compressor are touchscreen. Many of the Lexus interface items work exactly the same way on the 14 inch screen and the 9.8 inch screen. It's just the layout that might be configured slightly differently. The backup camera view on the 9.8 inch display. You also have your indicator line settings and the wide angle view setting option is on the bottom left. Rear cross traffic alert on the 9.8 inch screen display. If your RX is equipped with the 360 monitor and the 9.8 inch screen, this will be your layout in drive and reverse. Your settings menus will also be in the stacked Lexus menu bar format on the left hand side of the screen. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the Lexus Virtual Classroom today to learn all about the brand new Lexus RX. Don't forget this is a two-part series, so if you've missed part one, make sure to locate the link for that video in the description below this video. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Hey Lexus, show my destinations. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding. Hey Lexus, show destinations. Oh, okay. Hey Lexus, show destinations. I... Oh, you're really making me mad. Hey Lexus. How can I help you?